Welcome back everybody. Now today I'm testing out the Ampere Desk Sunglasses. These are billed as the world's first app-enabled electrochromic smart sunglasses. It's a pretty fancy title, but when I first saw these I thought, all right, just another pair of sunglasses that plays music, no big deal. But when I saw the main feature of these, I knew I had to try them out and see how they really worked. So I'll get to that as I test them out in today's video. Before I get started, let's flash back to the unboxing and see how that went. We engineered to be worn from dawn till dusk. A polarization tester. Oh, it says extra nose pads. And we have the manual, which I will read over. We also have a charging cable. I just in first inspection, the frames don't feel particularly heavy or light. They feel, they feel nice, I guess. They have kind of a matte finish to them. Let me take a peek at this charging case here. Well, it's like a brick. That's interesting. Right, so it looks like the glasses are going to have to go in here. I'm guessing. There it goes. Okay, there it goes. There it goes. All right, that's how it's going to go in there when it's charging. But let me read the instructions over and then get started. A couple of quick notes. These cost $295. There's a light version that's $195 that does not have the audio features. The two primary features of these are the built-in audio and the adjustable tent. There are other brands of glasses out there that already have audio built into them like Bose and Ray-Ban. But the adjustable tent, the way they're implemented in these glasses is something I've not seen before. Our one disclaimer is I have a pretty rudimentary understanding about how this works, but I understand there's a couple of different technologies for tinting sunglasses. One of them is photochromic, which I, you've probably seen in transition lenses. You walk outside and they get darker. That's affected by, I believe, UV rays. And there's electrochromic, which these are, and that is tinted by an electrical current. Now, as far as I understand, there's also companies out there that sell electrochromic smart film. That film goes on windows, and as far as I can tell, that's a pretty new industry. You'll probably see more of that in the future. I kind of feel like my geeking out about these lenses is a bit like someone geeking out about a cell phone in 1990. Hey, look, mom, I'm calling from my car. Isn't this great? But I digress. I think it's time to take a look at how this tint goes. All right, let's take a look at the app here now. To Right now, the app says that my desk is offline, so I hold down this button and it should pair with my phone. All right, we are paired now. Let me cl click on the desk. Now, here is how the tent levels work. Right now, it's in the lightest. There's a preset here. It goes light and dark, so it goes from one end to the other. Here's how that works. I'm going to hit dark right now. Check it out. Boom! That's the darkest. Pretty nice. You can also use a slider here and just kind of pick different levels of, of shade. Unlike the buttons on the side that only have four, you can pretty much go anywhere in between. I'm sliding this as I go. Or you can just hit the button, boom, light and dark. I'll show you through the camera how it actually looks, but my first impression is that the lightest setting, I believe there's no current whatsoever because it has an amber tint to it. And as soon as I add any kind of tint, it has more of a bluish tint to it. And there is a slight gradient from a little bit lighter to a little bit darker. Uh, I'm not sure if that's on purpose or just the way the lenses are made, but I do notice that. Now, if you're using the button on the side, there's four levels of tint. The lightest, light, medium, dark. I have shown a few people, and the reaction is always the same when they see you tinting your glasses with a push of a button. That does raise some eyebrows. It's a new technology. Maybe one day it won't be so impressive, but right now, it's impressive. Man, it sure is bright out here. I wish my glasses were darker. Oh, wait. Maybe they are. All right, one more time, very close up so you can see how it looks. This is the level one, level two, level three, level four. One, two, three, four. There are more choices on the app, it's, but I do find that the four choices on the button are perfectly fine too. Or you could just hit this preset light, dark, light, dark. I should also point out that the app has a fine feature. It just sends a tone to the glasses. Here, here it is on this top right here. This is just a moment. We're buzzing your pair of... I guess you're not supposed to wear those when the tone goes off, but that's the tone. They're definitely not designed to buzz while you're wearing them. That was loud. All right, I've got my camera focused on this wall out here. I got it a little bit overexposed to kind of simulate a bright day. Let's see how the glasses look. All right, here we are in the, this is the normal lightest tent they have. You can see it has a bit of an amber tint to it. All right, here's the next tent level. You can see how it kind of turns blue. It's kind of bluish as opposed to amber. This is the third one, and then here is the darkest. Let's go through these again. Lightest, second tent level, third tent level, fourth tent level. 
When you look at the sky, you can see there's a very slight gradient as far as the tint goes. It becomes a little bit more pronounced as it gets darker. Compared to these are the Ray-Bans, you can see how the Ray-Bans look to all these. Let's compare the Ray-Bans to all the different tent levels here. Ray-Ban stories not polarized. The Ampere Dusk, polarized. Let's try the different tent levels now. Level one, two, three, four. It seems like it's less polarized as I get darker. Looking through them right now, they seem very clear. I mean, they're brand new lenses, of course, but the clear clarity is really nice. All right, first darkened level. Again, the, the top is a little bit darker than the bottom. I'm not sure that's by design or an accident, but that's how it looks, which doesn't bother me at all, actually. At the next level, uh, it looks pretty good. Again, I still see that kind of gradient. Again, it doesn't bother me. And the darkest level. Just kind of looking around. I mean, they look, they're, they're perfectly fine sunglasses. I'm not sure they're extraordinary sunglasses, but they're perfectly functional. Let me compare these to the Ray-Bans. All right, the Ray-Bans do not have that gradient to them. They're also not polarized, um, but they're also very clear. I would say the, the darkness level is somewhere in the middle of where the, uh, the dusks are. If I put these on interchangeably, I really wouldn't notice a huge difference. The only difference is that I can adjust these. I can't adjust these. Let's compare the Ampere Dusk versus the Ray-Ban Wayfair, shall we? Let's take a close look at it. Very similar looking just at first glance. The Wayfairs have a much shinier plastic than the Ampere does. It's also a lot thicker. You can definitely see that the Ray-Bans are much thicker. That could also be one reason the Ray-Bans audio is so much better because it has a little bit more capacity for audio. Ray-Bans on top, Ampere on the bottom. The Ray-Bans feel a little bit heavier than the, than the Dusk glasses do. All right, I'm listening to the Ray-Ban audio. It's, it's, it's okay. It's, you can't hear it, but it's, it's okay. It's, it's not great. Now I'm listening to the Ampere, it's not as good. There's absolutely no bass whatsoever. In fact, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take an audio clip and I'm gonna try to simulate about the difference between the two of these. It's not an exact recording, but it's gonna be my simulation of about how different they sound. So first up here for my simulation, listen to how the, approximately how the Ray-Ban sound. Now here's my approximation of how the Ampere sounds. How do these look compared to each other? Now on this side, I've got the Ampere Dusk sunglasses over there is gonna be the Ray-Bans. They're pretty similar as you can tell. I mean, there's not a huge difference. The only real difference is this, which is a pretty big difference. But just walking down the street, you wouldn't really notice much difference between the two of these. The Ray-Ban has a hidden control over here that you can't see or feel, which I absolutely hated because you can't really feel it. It was, it was very clunky, not easy to figure out. Ray-Ban also has a button here. You turn it on the inside. The Ampere is a little bit more, a little bit more minimal. It just has one button on this side, and this one is for controlling the tint. And then there's a button on this side, which is for controlling the audio, whether it be music, taking calls, or whatever else you're doing audio related. So tint on this side, audio on this side. I mean, I like that. I like the layout better. It's, it's easier to figure out. Ray-Bans very black. Ampere not quite as black. I also wanted to just go over the cases real quick here. Now the Ampere case is a separate charge of about 70 bucks as of this recording. Here's how this goes in here. This does charge the glasses. You have to line up uh, this part right here with the connector in there. Now the one cool thing about the Ampere case is it does have a little air tag holder there. That's kind of cool. So you have to just kind of fold it like that. It takes a couple times to get used to, not bad. It's very thick, very square, very kind of maybe clunky compared to the Ray-Ban case, which is a little bit more sleek. Now the Ray-Ban, they go in here a little bit differently. You just fold them up and you place kind of where the logo's at on that connector right there. Ray-Ban Ampere Dusk. This, this case, there was no extra, this one is extra. All right, so let's take a look at some of the pros and cons of the Ampere Desk sunglasses. The biggest pro is clearly the tent feature. 
There are those out there that would say that the ability to adjust the tint that quickly is a must-have feature and they won't care about the price. Another pro is that they're easy to use and they work perfectly right out of the box. There was no elaborate setup. It, there was nothing confusing about it. It worked exactly as it's supposed to very easily, actually. But that takes us to a couple of cons that we can't ignore. The first one being the price. At 300 bucks, it's kind of expensive. You're going to really have to want that tent feature. Otherwise, it's not going to be worth the price. And not only are these 300, but the charging case is an additional 70 bucks. The other big con is the audio disappointing the the lack of bass really relegates this more to podcasts and taking phone calls it's not great for listening to music but that's all I have as usual I'll keep using these and let you know how they hold up over time if you've used these tell me what you think in the comments below I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time